Rob McNelly asks, how do I build an LPAR? I've been getting questions about my videos. People want to know, how did you get your LPAR set up in the first place in order to run those NIM operations on them? Today I'm going to show you just how easy it is to create an LPAR. First we will look at an existing profile of the VIO server that we will be using. If I select the VIO server, then go to Manage Profiles and click on the default profile, I can look at my processors, my memory, my I.O. devices, and my virtual adapters. In this case, I have a virtual Ethernet adapter and I have three virtual SCSI adapters. I know that adapter 10 is in use, so I will end up going with adapter 20 in this example. Keep in mind that these are arbitrary numbers that I chose, and you can use whatever numbering scheme makes sense in your environment. Now I'm going to set up my client LPAR that is going to be talking with the VIO server that we just looked at. I'm going to call this one P7 VIOS Client. I will name the profile default and I will give it some arbitrary values for my processor and memory. I will tell it that I desire 0.2 of the CPU, but I will give myself some room to grow by going with a maximum of four CPUs. I will also give myself two virtual processors with the ability to grow to four virtual processors. I will also make this an uncapped partition so it can use more than its entitled capacity if there's free CPU on the system. Next I will tell it that I desire 2 gigs of memory with a maximum of 8 gig and a minimum of 1 gig. I will zero out the megabytes column to keep the memory at an even number. Note that I could select an active memory expansion factor if I chose to, but for this example we will not be looking at that. As this client will have virtual adapters, I will skip over the I.O. devices that are available, and I will change the maximum number of virtual adapters to 100. I will add in a virtual Ethernet adapter, and I will add in a virtual SCSI adapter. I will choose adapter number 20, and I will choose the VIO server to talk to, and I will choose the VIO server adapter that is also 20. I like the ability to quickly match up my adapter numbers, so I try to use the same numbers on both the server and the client. If this were a dual VIO environment, I would want to try to use 21 for the client and 21 for the other VIO server. I leave the rest of my settings, click on Finish, and I create my client LPAR. Through the magic of editing, I decided to rename this client to P7VIOS3C, and I opened up a PuTTY session to my HMC. I run VT menu and I select the LPAR that I just created, and I'll start it up in SMS mode. I enter zero to make this window my active console window. Then I select my boot options. I select my install boot device. When I select list all devices, I see that I made a mistake as adapter 20 already has something assigned to it. It came up with a virtual optical disk. This is a good opportunity to see just how easy it is to move things around. I will shut down my client LPAR and go into the profile settings. I will change my virtual adapter from adapter number 20 to adapter 30. This time, when I boot my LPAR into SMS mode and I look at my boot options, I will see that it does not have anything on that virtual SCSI adapter. In my next video, I will show you how to go into the VIO server and map a disk to the VIO client that we just created, and how to install from a virtual optical device. All of this should help demonstrate just how easy it is to create and edit your LPAR profile.